Indiana became a seller, which I think we expected. So basically for Levert, they get a lottery protected first round pick from Cleveland. And mm-hmm. then they get this Houston second rounder that will be, you know, in the low thirties, which is a nice pick, but I thought they'd get more for, for him. Um, why, why did Indiana do this now, Kev? And was there anybody else out there that could have given him more than this? Cause I was surprised by that. This was the trade. I mean, I, I disagree. I think it's a good return for Indiana here. They get two picks in the, the 20 to 32, 33 range, depending on where Houston falls. That's going to give them a lot of flexibility on draft night. Similar to what I said earlier about like with Houston, if Indiana ends up fifth or sixth, um, they'll have some ammo to move around. Um, the, the problem for them is this, like, as you get deeper into the first round, this year's class seems like it'll be weaker. Um, we'll see how that changes before June. Um, but those picks in 2022 don't necessarily have the same value as some of the deeper drafts that we've seen in recent years. But with Levert, I don't think there's people lined up around the corner for him. He's been a notoriously inefficient scorer for years now. Um, his most efficient season of his career, or maybe the best, was his rookie year. Um, so for him, I, I think with Levert, he's a volume scorer, and there's some value there for Cleveland, but it's no guarantee to, to be a... A plus result for the Cavaliers on this end either because of his scoring inefficiencies. Yeah, except for he does do what they need, which is drive to the basket, draw people. Yep. That's exactly what Cleveland needs, which they're missing right now. Cleveland's so fun. I'm really excited. <laughs> I mean, really, I I think they're a really fun team. And I like Darius. I mean, everyone loves Darius Garland. It's too bad Sexton is gone. They're they're such an interesting team. So I I think Indiana, the one thing you can never discount with them, uh, old school owners. They're watching their luxury tax line. They want to get way under. They want all sorts of cap space. I I, I hope they don't. Tr- I mean, well, actually, I do hope they trade Sabonis. I'd like him to see him go somewhere where he could be a little more relevant in the league. Because I just, well, I know you like him too, Bill. I just love watching him play. And, um, you know, we always thought they would trade Miles Turner before Sabonis. It looks like they might even trade both. If this really is the fire sale that we keep hearing, it might be. Yeah, and Turner's hurt. So um, well, Turner, Levert, that's the problem with Turner. That that yeah. killed every that killed their plan. You know, I think he already tra- would have been traded. Yeah, he would have been gone so, already. So KFC, I I wanted the Cavs to get Gordon. I thought he made more sense with the team they have. Uh, I also think he's playing well, um, and I think that would have been a fair price for Gordon if they had done that. I guess the case with Levert is he's twenty seven, and he's bounced around a little. He's been in different types of situations and. You know, if you're looking at it and you're just like, all right, this is our team now, you know, where we have, you have Mobley and Allen, you have Kevin Love and Marketing, you have Garland, you have Levert, you have Okoro, you have Osman. And, and Sexton. And Sexton when he comes yeah, back. Yeah, when he comes back. Yeah. Yeah. And then you have some picks that you accumulated too. To me, this, this was a move, I'm guessing, I haven't read any of the stories yet, that they really thought about this for five, six weeks. And they were like, this is actually the guy we want to add. It's under contract this year, next year. Um, and if he does well, we can extend him. But I think for just watching them, I thought Gordon would have made I thought adding him in a playoff series, I trust him more than Levert. I think Levert's kind of a ball stopper. That's I, I, I'm not positive about him with the flow that this team has. So I guess we'll find out. You seem like you're down on it. I mean, he's definitely leans towards scoring. I, I don't know if I'd go full ball, ball stopper. Um, he can pass a little bit. Um, and maybe surrounded by the talent they have in Cleveland, he leans into that even more. Um, but he's not like a like a orchestrator or conductor of the offense by any means, which is why, like Jackie said, he, he brings what they need in the sense that they need downhill, a guy who can right. attack the basket, and that can complement the perimeter-oriented game of Darius Garland and give them, I mean, like you can shuffle different pieces with Jared Allen or Evan Mobley. There's so many different pick-and-roll combinations that they can play with um, and that can be effective together. So like I, I like it for Cleveland. I don't love it. Um, similar to like you said, Bill, because of just the natural Eric Gordon fit, what he would have been there. But he's also six years older. Yeah, and he doesn't fit the timeline of what that core is. So this this is clearly a trade for Cleveland that's about more than just this season. It's about the future and growing Levert into something that they want him to be that fits everything else. Well, in the Kevin Love rejuvenation season, Jackie, 
<laughs> Who would have thought? We, he was like way back in the freezer. He was like oh covered gosh. with ice cubes and like seaweed. And you're like, what is that? Is that a pizza? And you're, right. you're pulling, you're pulling. It's like, oh my God, it's Kevin Love. Hey, he's delicious. I forgot. Yeah, what a comeback story. Well, you forget how good he is. You know, seriously, you forget how good he is. Again, it's all about fit. You said that earlier, Kevin. And I would say 95% of all NBA players, it's all about fit. It's, and, and, and your mental attitude. And, you know, his attitude sucked. He deserved to get criticized. I think he knows that, you know? Yeah. He was, you know, he was like, man, I'm a champion. I don't need this crap, you know? And so now all of a sudden they're kind of fun to be around. And he helps them. He does. He's had a nice little, I mean, he's really been good. Well, you know what's been great? And I, I've thought this forever. I mean, I just feel like, I know he won a title in Cleveland. He'd probably do that over again, but just the worst possible team for him to go to for what his skills were. I just love when he's around the basket. Right. And when you're Absolutely. when you're just putting him in the corner and you're putting him 25 feet away, you're taking this guy who his single greatest gift is his instincts around the basket for his mm. offensive rebounds, for the ability to grab a defensive rebound and send a pass out and all of these things that if he's just standing in the corner like Jay Crowder, right. I, I'm not using those gifts. So I mean, it's been nice to see it again this year. Well, and he's, you know, he completely changed his body. You were talking before about changing your body. Think about Minnesota Kevin Love and what this Kevin Love looks like. Go back and look at the old photos, you know? Mm. He completely remodeled his body too because he had to, because he saw what was happening. He was smart enough to realize the game's getting away from low post centers. If I want to survive, I got to be able to shoot threes and I got to thrive out here on the perimeter and I got to figure out a way to do it. So he completely underwent a complete change in his body. He's another guy that, he's not plant-based, but he's close. And he, you know, he watches every single calorie he puts into his body. So he made that he made that change ahead of most of the other guys. Like you know, Roy Hibbert all of a sudden looked up and he's like, "Oh crap, what happened? Wait, I can't play anymore. How come?" You know. And uh, but Kevin Love was Kevin Love was sort of planning for it. <laughs> <laughs> 